going to do next the male uh, intermittent catheterization. So if they, if your nurse says that they need a UA on a person that doesn't have a catheter, then you will check your order always. And then you're going to gather your equipment, which includes your, there's like I said, a soap and towel, well not towels, you'll have to bring towels, washcloths, a bath blanket, the basins in the room, you're going to bring two catheter trays, okay, extra sterile gloves, and that's pretty much it. Again, so you're going to go to the room, knock on the door, going to identify your patient with two patient identifiers. You are going to tell him what you're going to do. Has he ever had a catheter before? Is he allergic to betadine? Very important to make sure they are not allergic to betadine, or if they are, that you're using something else to clean them with other than betadine, okay? So no, he's okay. So, hi, Mr. Smith. My name is Ann. I'm your student nurse today. I'm going to put a tube up your bladder to get a UA. It's not going to stay. It will come back out. So have you ever had one before? He says yes. So we're okay there. And he's not allergic to betadine. Okay, so I get my bath blanket. So we are going to cover him up with the bath blanket. And you can just put it like so. Cover up his feet. Okay. And you're going to have it down like so. Excuse me, like so. All right. So now, this with clean gloves. Okay. Again, you're going to turn this around. And I'm going to open it up first, like so. You don't want to ever turn your back on your sterile field because that contaminates that. Now, as you know, I went side to side. That's okay. But not... Uh, and going across like that, that's contaminating. So you have to really watch what you're doing, how you contaminate your field. And then you take this, oh, open it up. You don't do that. And then this one's your last one. Okay? Now your sterile gloves. Now, I'm going to move this over so I can put my sterile gloves here so I don't contaminate my field. Although that was not non-sterile. It was sterile. So I could do it here if I wanted to. This is unsterile. Okay, then you open this up. Now this time I'm going to put my sterile gloves on first before I do that. Alright, so you open it up here. And be sure where you're putting your hands. Keep them away from your uniform. Okay. Then, other hand goes here. Alright. So I'm sterile. Again, trash. All right, now, I'm sterile, so I don't want to touch here. I can touch here, okay, to move it over. Okay, what I'm going to do is take this shiny side down. And what I'm going to do is, I'm sterile, so I'm going to really make sure I use this, okay? Now, with a man... All right, now see, I got a problem here because I am, I forgot to bring it down before I got sterile. So use your rest of your body to bring that down like so without touching your gloves. Okay, now we're going to put this under, and again, watch my hands.
I like to do this pad without being sterile because just because of things like this, you have such a problem getting that underneath. Okay, now, here's my fenestrated drape, and I'm still sterile. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that just double protects, and I'm going to do it like so. There you go. Okay, so there you got it. All right. If we were getting a specimen from him, I would set this over here without touching the top. Okay. Now, I'm going to open these up. There we go. One, two, three. Again. Now, I'm still sterile, so I'm going to take this out without touching the inside and set that there. Okay, this is my well, where is my little notch? There we go. All right, this is my gel that I'm going to put on that. So I just stick it in there. Okay. And trash. And trash. All right, then. Still sterile. I take it by this side. And I'm going to set it like so. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, now, use my non-dominant hand, and I'm going to grab a hold of his penis down here on the shaft. I'm going to start from the meatus one time around, okay, one time around. Then lower the next one one time around. And then, last one, kind of close to the head. Okay, one time around is all. You don't circle it. Okay? All right, so, then, I take my catheter, and three or four inches, I'm going to get the gel on it. Okay. Mr. Smith, I want you to take a deep breath. And here we go. And his head is usually up. Oops. There. Okay, so here we go. In, in, in. Now, what you're going to meet in a little while is his uh, prostate gland. Okay? Sometimes it's constricted and they're going to go, oh my God, that hurts. Oh my God, that hurts. And no urine. So, what you can do is Bring it out a little bit, and you're going to then swirl it around like so, and go back in. And don't take your time doing this if you can help it, because this hurts. For most men at a certain age, this hurts. Okay, so we got urine. Okay, now I'm going to let his bladder. Now what I have found... You can crudet, I'm oh, sorry, I sweat, uh, crudet the bladder, which means pushing down with your hand, and this is, this is already uh, not sterile, pushing down with your hand and pushing, and it's called C-R-E-D-E, -E, crudet in the bladder. And sometimes it helps, even on women, to get the urine to come out better, okay? So... When I don't get any more urine, now if it's not coming, you can bring the angle up of the penis. You can, like I said, swirl it around. You can set his head up just a little more. OK. 
okay? And once you get your yarn, then you're going to and take it out. Boom, you're done, okay? Like so. Now, you're going to take this and take it to the bathroom and measure it and then put it on the INO sheet. And then you're going to clean them up, wash them, and that's it. What I wanted to tell you too, some men have never been circumcised. And their skin comes over the pe top of the penis. If it does, when you are washing them, you have to pull back that foreskin. And sometimes it's nasty. They don't wash their foreskin. <laughs> You're going to find all sorts of things. But clean back, pull back that foreskin before you do the intermittent catheter. That has to be all cleaned, okay? Because it looks a lot of times like cottage cheese. It's so nasty, but, and odor, bad odor. So make sure they're clean before you start the intermittent or any kind of catheterization, okay? But the big thing is, once you are done, make sure you pulled and worked that foreskin back over the head of the penis. Because if you don't, that will swell. And that can cause them lots of difficulty. They have to go to surgery, have it cut. I mean, it's, it's bad. So make sure, even if you're giving the person a bath and you're cleaning that foreskin, always make sure you pull it back to where it was. Very, very important. Okay? Very important. And I think that was it.